Hey everyone, and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim, and we talk about horror movies on this show. And it is October when you're watching this, at least. Mm -hmm. And we are doing lots of extra episodes for October as part of our Octoberthon. And this episode is going to be about Dead Snow, the Norwegian uh, Nazi zombie film um, from 2009, which is a movie that, like, it's one of those things where I constantly see it on services, I constantly see the poster popping mm -hmm. up, but somehow never get around to watching it until now. So mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that. We'll start spoiler free as we always do, and we'll go from there. But uh, so you hadn't seen the silent, right? Is that correct? No, I might have started watching it at one point and then got distracted or fell asleep or something. Uh, but yeah, this uh, I believe this came out in two thousand nine, uh, and yeah, it was one of those ones where like I always would hear people say like. You know, like no one ever was like, "Oh man, this is a great movie that you gotta see." But I would, it was one that I was heard like, "Hey, you know what's pretty good? Like, oh, like you should check this out." Or like, "Oh yeah, if you like, you know, this these movies or whatever, you know, look at it." And uh, you know, it it did suffer the um, what I am now labeling the the screams curse, which is, uh, yes, it's pretty much streaming like for the entirety of like its life cycle right up until the point when we decide to do it yeah yeah and then we have to, like i we have to track it down yeah, yeah. <laughs> i swear like this has been on netflix for like 10 years even though it's only like nine years old <laughs> and yet <laughs> when we go to do it it's like gone but yeah, yeah that, uh, typical typical yeah so uh i'm glad we got around to it though because yeah i'd been hearing about it for a while so yeah, so it's, it's a really simple film. It is a group of friends who are all like merchants who go to this cabin in the woods. But of course it's in Norway, uh, so it's going to a snowy location in the snowy mountains. Mm -hmm. And whilst there, Nazi zombies wake up and come after them. <laughs> that's basically, that's oh, the point of the movie. That's, that's it, that's it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask the question, Tim, mm -hmm. did you yeah. enjoy Dead Snow? Uh, yeah, I would say mildly so. Um, like, again, there was a little bit of hype because I'd heard a lot of people say it was pretty good. Uh, and then when I watched it, like, there's definitely some fun stuff. Like, there's some interesting kills, but there really is no story. Um, I could not really care about any of the characters. Um, I, I think they're trying to... And, and they might even label this in IMDb as, like, a horror comedy, but... Uh, and there were definitely like some jokes, but I don't think it was like super funny. If, um, if you're into horror comedy, it wasn't bad. A little more towards the end, I, I felt like the last like half yeah. hour was a bit more outrageous, therefore a bit more comedy esque. I didn't really get that feeling in the first half though. The first half felt like it was just building no, like a normal not. horror movie. You know, yeah, they were cracking some jokes here or there, but it wasn't. Um, mm -hmm. My feelings in the film um, are kind of similar, maybe even a bit more negative. Like I, I kind of mm -hmm. came out of it just kind of feeling like. It's not necessarily the worst thing I've ever seen. It's not like a, a mm -hmm. super bad movie, but it's just a bit shit. Not, not, oh it's... yeah, yeah. It's I I was expecting to find like a new hidden gem. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely not that. It's just like a, you know, and I, I can see now why it was on like streaming for so long because I think it is like a good streaming movie where it's like something you don't have to pay for, but you just want to throw on a horror movie you've never seen before that you don't have to pay too much attention to perfect for that but yeah yeah it, it, it's not amazing um you know what i actually thought was kind of funny is i was looking at like a an image of it like you know just do like a google search and they have um i think was probably the dvd cover art mm -hmm. and uh they have a quote on it that says like one of the best 25 zombie movies of all time and i'm like 25 that's not that like <laughs> I, I don't think that's that flattering because like no. I mean, truly great classic zombie movies. I think you could do like a pretty good top ten. Like, yeah, you know, but I'm not but really I feel like... that excited about watching number twenty five. <laughs> yeah, like I think once you get past fifteen, you're going from like stuff that was like great to maybe just okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, but uh, I, I think one thing you kind, of, I think you kind of were touching on a little bit. Uh, um, like, I feel like the first half of the movie is trying to be an actual movie, like. You know, it, it's trying to have characters, it's trying to have somewhat of a story, but I feel like once you really get into the nitty gritty of it and like the zombie Nazis are showing up in full force, I feel like it, it stops being a movie and it's really kind of just like a collection of like funny gags of like, oh, uh, people getting killed and you know, zombies getting killed and what can you know what can you do with that? And yes. it, it kind of feels like 
what, uneven. What can we do with intestines over and over again? That's kind yeah. of one of the running themes here. Is how how can we effectively use some intestines? Um, I my, my my first big problem with it though, right from the start of the movie, and I was kind of not really that into it from the, the get go, is I don't like how it looks. That's that's maybe like a really oh, petty, yeah. petty complaint, but it looks like a TV show but not even like when i say it looks like a tv show i'm not i don't mean it looks like um because you know tv shows all the movies now like you know you you watch handmaid's yeah. tale or stranger things they look great it looks like a daytime tv show it looks like the sort of thing i expect to find on like two o'clock in the afternoon like more like a like a three camera sitcom or something like uh watching like an older episode of like friends or something yeah uh, yeah it, it's just the, the, the lighting is so even and it, it, there's no like style to it and um just when, even when they're going out in the snow and stuff they're outside and it should look great it should look like this great vista and instead it feels like um i don't know it felt it feels like this sort of like almost like a kids tv show the, the way i think of a kids tv show I can looking, see that, yeah. um or, or or like a a cheaper documentary like, not not your, like your planet earth because that, that looks quite stunning but Right. Like it feels like you know that's just just like some regular cameras out in the out in the you know out in the forest. It doesn't feel like there's been mm-hmm. any like thought that went into like oh, let's make this look good. Like let's make it look like a, look like a movie. Mm-hmm. It just looks like here's snow in the forest and yeah. that's it. And there... yeah, that, that's just how I feel about it. I think there's a, I think there's like a few really bad green screen shots. Yeah, there was. Like, there's... Yeah, <laughs> like there's this one like where a guy kind of like getting attacked and then like he stands up and as soon as he stands up and you see like a full body shot of him it's like whew, green screen city <laughs> yeah and then the other thing that i thought made it feel really kind of like cheap and like daytime tv to me mm-hmm. outside of the visuals and how, how just how it looked visually but was actually the i thought the acting and this is the thing like, I'm, I'm watching in a foreign language with subtitles and that almost like protects some bad acting sometimes because I, I can't really tell if the inflections or, or anything like that is, is okay because it's not my language. I don't understand it. So I, I almost hide some of that sometimes. But even the, the way they were over-accenting things and reacting to things, again, it felt like um, actors in like a play or something like that rather than an actual movie. And there is a... I, well, a little bit of difference here. I actually watched the dubbed. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, God. Completely but... different opinions on this. <laughs> uh, well, no, I mean, I, I don't think it helps the you know the case uh, you okay. know in, in any way. Like it's still, but I mean, even with like the dubbed and stuff, there's still things that fell off. Like, um, there's one character who is it, a really strange character. I, I guess it's kind of like an assholey kind of guy. Uh, that it, it's the the guy like with like the really you know short hair that kind of ends up. I mean, I think being like the second second longest survivor. Um, but he has like some jokes and stuff that just like the timing is really off. That uh, yeah, yeah. I, it felt weird. There's also a joke. There's like a, one of the one of one of the pairs because the, the guys and the girls go up separately. There's like a car with the guys, a car with the girls, um, mm-hmm. uh, and they're both kind of talking about the, the other you know set of people and like oh who who you may hook up with and blah blah. blah. Uh, but one's a couple. So the girl with the dreadlocks uh, is dating this mm-hmm. the the the, the guy who's afraid of blood, right? I mean, I can't remember any of the names because mm-hmm. why would they? The, the, the characters are not yeah. are not good enough to remember. The the only one I remember was like the quote unquote movie fanatic. Oh, we'll, we'll talk Lynn. about that. We'll talk about that in a minute. I've got <laughs> I've got opinions on him, but he's got this joke. The, the guy who's the, the, the guy who's afraid of blood, which is really fun. It was supposed to be funny because it's like uh, they're all medicines and he's afraid of blood. But that's kind of mm-hmm. weird. But he and uh, hey, minor spoiler alert. You know he gets covered in blood by the end. But oh, of course he does. Yeah, uh, uh, that, that <laughs> is like the, that's the arc. That is the only arc in the movie is that he ends up covered in blood. Uh, but he <laughs> with his girlfriend at one point earlier on in the film, they're on the couch on the sofa, and he he basically hey, oh yeah, I'm going to do this thing. Like, just trust me. And she's like okay, and he like puts like her like her like her bandana or whatever down over her eyes. Mm-hmm. And then picks up a pillow and pushes it down to her face. Now keep in mind, the rest of the group in the cabin with them are just playing Twister over, over, you know, over to the yeah. side. Mm-hmm. And he just presses down and he keeps going and she starts to struggle. And then the other characters look over and like, "What are you doing?" And then eventually, <laughs> like, she kicks him off and she's like struggling to breathe and she's like, "What the hell are you doing?" And I get claustrophobic. And he's like, "Oh, I was only kidding." What is funny? I... What what is a friendly <laughs> joke? Like, 
That's yeah. like you don't you don't try and like smother your friends with pillows and then say, "Oh, I was only kidding." That's not a joke. I don't get it. What is yeah. this? Some weird Norwegian humor that I just don't understand? <laughs> What's going on? This was super strange. Like, if this happened in real life, uh, first of all, not only would it end that relationship, it might probably also end like those friendships too. Like, I wouldn't want to hang out with someone that like almost murders people as a joke. Yeah, like, like the, the, the kind of looks it's like for... he does it for one second. He does it long enough that you're like, he might kill this person. It's not even like I, I could get it. Like, if he's like, oh, if he jokingly said, "I'm going to kill you," and then he just kind of holds it in place. Sure, and, pre- yeah. and pretends he's pushing it down, but he's not actually applying yeah. pressure. That'd be like fine. Yeah, people who pretend to kill each other all the time, whatever. I, I pretend yeah. to kill my cats on a regular basis, but I never actually put any pressure or anything, Psycho. right? <laughs> like you never pretend to strangle your cat. You never just sort of go, oh, I got you, cat. Uh, yeah, don't do that. Uh, I prefer to show them affection, but hey, to, to each their own. It's affection, because you, you do it with the, 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 the nice <laughs> voice. As long as you put on the, the, the kitty voice, the, oh, he's a good pretty kitty, okay. as you're doing it. It doesn't really matter, <laughs> right? But, uh, okay. <laughs> but, you know, like, as long as you're not, like, doing anything, but he's actually, like, pushing down right, right. and applying pressure yeah. to the point where she starts kicking her she legs. Can't escape. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what's funny about this? And the other people look over and they're just kind of like, what's going on over there? Huh, that, that, that mark. What a weirdo. <laughs> Back to Twister. Um, so, oh I'm actually going give, give it, to give it one one point here. I want to give it a, a point because early on in the film, when they're in the cars and they're driving towards the, 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 the cabin, um, we, we meet the guys first and we get introduced to the, the, the movie there. Let me just get his name so I can actually call him by name. Uh, Erland. Er, er, Erland, yes. Uh, er, Erland, yes, it's an L. Uh, he, so he's like, oh, you're the movie nerd and you're the single guy. If you want to, like, you know, get any action this week, you may want to, like, you know, stop being such a nerd, blah, 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 blah. And they set him up. And then we cut to the girls and there's three girls, there's four guys and three girls and two of them are in relationships with the other two, uh, two of the guys. And they mentioned the other guy's weird. It's like, oh, the one that's single is like, the biggest movie nerd ever. Um, and mm-hmm. she's like, oh, okay. Because she, she's asking about the guys, like, oh, who could I hook up with this weekend? Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, okay, so we're going to do this thing where you know, I was thinking of Friday the Thirteenth Part Three with Shelley and like how he's set up with mm-hmm. the, the pretty girl and how she's kind of like weirded out by him. And I was like, okay, we're going yeah. to do this thing. I want to give the movie credit because it doesn't actually do the cliche thing with this. She actually just seems genuinely into him the entire time. She never like is like, oh, he's such yeah. a nerd. It, it, like I was half expecting the, the the arc, you know, where she starts off thinking, oh, he's mm-hmm. a, he's a chubby loser, and then like you know, by halfway mm-hmm. through the movie, she's like, you know what, he's actually kind of funny, and I kind of like him. She's just into him. She yeah. starts flirting with him immediately. When they're playing Twister, she's like deliberately sticking her ass in his face and like smirking at him. And I'm like, <laughs> she's just into him. You know what? Okay, I'll take it. This is actually kind of like different. I'll, I'll give it that. Mm-hmm. Like, um, yeah, no, I, I, I actually liked it. Uh, yeah, I mean, hey, I'm, I'm never going to complain when <laughs> the chubby movie guy, you know, yeah. gets the girl. But Sure, sure. Um, I, I, I can I, relate to, to that to some extent. That said, I do have complaints <laughs> with his character. Because he oh, yeah. he is the most generic like movie like buff mm. character I have ever seen oh, in yeah. my life. <laughs> They're on the way to the cabin well, and like someone's like, oh, we have no cell phone signal. Uh, you know what movies that you know? He's like, oh, what movie is that like? What do you think of? And they're like, oh, Friday the Thirteenth. Mm. And he's like, oh no, there was no cell phone signal because there was no cell phones. And he starts like critiquing them. Yeah. <laughs> and then the the the, the, you know, the the girl that is supposed to be set up with them, she she's like. Oh, but uh, April Fool's Day, though, that's a classic. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, that is a classic. And I'm like, no, it's not. Mm-hmm. Not really. It's not that good a movie. <laughs> what are you talking about? What's happening? And that was, uh, that was funny. I was, I was watching this, like, uh, with Melissa. Then, of course, like, uh, uh, you know, we're laughing because they do the thing where, like, their jaws drop and, like, this girl knows about movies. Like, yeah. How is, this, yeah. how is this possible? She's seen a horror movie. Oh, my God. She's a goddess. Like, <laughs> 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 which i mean and, i mean i think there's certain movies that someone could say that with and i'd be like impressed i'd be like mm-hmm. like if someone's oh, like, sure, yeah. if someone referenced like um i don't know like what, chopping mall i'd be like right, marry me right now you're a fan of chopping yeah. mall you're the best <laughs> but like you know it's just like the reaction is weird but the, the, the mm-hmm. stuff that really bothered me with him though is that later on they're having a snowball fight and they're actually kind of like treating it like a, almost like a paintball gun fight where they're all hiding behind trees and like throwing snowballs. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, fine, whatever. You know, sn- sn- you know, if you love, love in snow, you make fun with it, sure. Um, 
but <laughs> he actually like you know switches to English for a second. Says you be kaye, mother. You know, like he says the, the yeah. diehard lady. <laughs> and all I could feel was like, these are really generic. Like this feels like they, they wanted to have a movie buff character, but no one actually like working on the film lo- looked into any like. I feel like for this type of character, you want to give them like a niche or like a, a like a, a specific oh, yeah. set set of movies or something at least a bit more like bizarre and like uh, like maybe something okay sure we're moving there so we might get the movies referencing but I feel like just mm-hmm. referencing Die Hard and Friday the Thirteenth mm-hmm. I don't know it just it feels a bit weak yeah you know like, it feels a bit like oh that was just the first thing that came to mind and that'll do um oh no yeah definitely like it you never get the sense that he is like a like I uh, like he feels like a dude that probably tells people like oh i love movies i'm a huge movie fan but like it's one of those things where it's like uh, i mean are you really like that into it like you know, he probably just likes like a lot of big blockbuster stuff which there's nothing wrong with that obviously, yeah sure but, but they're pretending like he's this this movie guy and i feel like he's this like scholar that just knows yeah. everything movie related i feel like if i turned around to him and said something like oh um it was that movie shot in anamorphic he'd probably be like what yeah. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Hell, you'd probably say that to me. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not claiming to be the true, one's true. movie fan. Yeah, but you know, I feel like I feel like I could drop a technical term on him, and he'd just be like, <laughs> "What?" Um, which is not a problem. Like, it's, it's okay. Not everyone has to be an expert, but they're pretending yeah. he has this movie buff. That's my problem with this. They're pretending, but he, he feels like he's just into like normal movies. I'm like. It's like people who yeah. think they're into cult and weird movies because they've seen Donnie Darko. Like this, they've seen Donnie Darko. Oh like, yeah, oh, definitely. We're, we're into like weird. I'm into like weird movies. I like cult in our house yeah. films, and I'm like, <laughs> you've literally just seen Donnie Darko. What the, what the hell are you talking about? Like, I, you know, it's just, it, it, it strikes yeah. me as that guy. <laughs> oh dear, that was a weird rant to go on, but it really irked me. What can I say? No, I, I, I know exactly what you mean because as soon as they were driving up and. Yes, like what the one character says, like, oh, he's the biggest movie nerd ever. Like, yeah, like instantly. You're right. That's the line. uh, That's the exact line of dialogue. It just says he's the biggest movie nerd on the planet. Yeah. So it's like you instantly know, like, I mean, you know, from us seeing like these movies, like especially in horror movies, I feel like, you know, they have the the the, you know, big movie nerd a a lot. But like you instantly just kind of roll your eyes like, all right, we're going to get a dude that like is gonna equate everything to movies and he's gonna quote lines from movies and blah 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 all right and it never really amounts to much like at one point when he when he realizes the zombies he says whatever you do don't don't get bit so but that never yeah. even really is a factor in the movie this movie is not about like all being bitten turned into a zombie that's never really anything that's like brought up it's just about surviving no, i mean i <laughs> yeah I, I don't know if it, like if this drove you crazy but i kept trying to figure out like okay what are these things and yeah like what are the rules like they don't seem like typical zombies where if you bite them um yeah you turn into a zombie if you um, bite them i mean i don't really i wouldn't recommend biting any zombies admittedly but you well <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, if, if, if they bite you yeah like if i don't know if you turn I mean, into a zombie don't get me wrong. Or... i'm fairly certain in dawn of the dead if they bit a zombie they would turn into a zombie just the same but it, that's that was never oh, sure. the question <laughs> I think at some point someone does bite one of the zombies, so maybe I maybe I'm misremembering something, but um, um maybe, but like I, I feel like at that point though, it was they probably were already like as good as dead. They were probably already like yeah. you know, on the way out, so like, screw it, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then, but then the other thing is though, I I don't know what these zombies want. Like, do they want to no, no, we know kill what, and eat people, no, or we know what they want? By the end of the movie, we know what they want. But, like, they want, I mean, I think we'd say it's not really that much of a, a spoiler. That's just, like, that's just the spoilers. That's just the spoilers at this point. Okay. That's fine. So, it, they kind of throw in this, like, little, uh, what I would say is a ripoff of the, the first Leprechaun movie. Uh, this little plot line where they're after this oh. gold. Right. Oh, uh, before we even actually talk about the, that, let's talk about how they find this information out. I feel like this is, is pertinent okay. to, the, to the, the movie here. Because you know how we always get that cliche character who's like, you know, old man Ralph, like, it's got a death curse, like, you know, that good, <laughs> right? We get the most extreme version of him, like, ever, where this random guy shows up at the ca- cabin and says, can I get some coffee here? And they let him in, give him some coffee, and he sits there, like, all they're all, they're all across from him, and he's sitting there, and he's like, oh, so what are you doing up here? And he's like, ah, you little spoiled shits, you probably didn't look up the history of this place, you, you, you don't want to unearth anything. <laughs> 
and he just sits in the camera zooms in and he's, he tells him about this you know during the, the second world war uh the germans would you know killed all these people and they, they stole like all this gold and silver from all the houses and they buried it here but then you know they, they got killed and uh stuck under the, the snow and stuff and but as he's leaving like so already he's the cliche he's the the warning character right but then as he's leaving mm-hmm. like the one of the one of the guys like kind of makes fun of something he says and he just grabs him by the throat and like you know like puts him up against the wall and what was weird is and this is one of the moments where the acting really took me out of it is that his friends didn't like jump up to like rip this like you know crazy like middle-aged man off of him they just all kind of like stood up kind of awkwardly and looked stared like oh what's happening like it was weird yeah. like the scene just played out so unnaturally but yeah so he really bugged me as a, as a cliche that character mm-hmm. but yeah so yes they, yeah. so the characters find a box of like gold and silver under the floorboards which, by the way, that was one of the other things that felt really weird and cheap to me, is that, like, so it was just like a door, it was, it was like a hatch to, like, for a storage space, mm-hmm. and that's where they've put some of their beer and stuff, and there's just mm-hmm. this little box, like, just in the corner that they just, like, sort of happen to find one of the times when they open it. It, it The set just felt, like, so underdressed to me. It felt like, oh, we'll just put this box here. It's not hidden behind anything, there's no mm-hmm. dust on it, there's nothing. It's just, like, mm-hmm. perfectly there. It, it felt so... Like the the set dresser, the set designer just didn't really think about it. Then just just oh, threw yeah. it there as if it was nothing. Mm-hmm. They felt out of place, and it it, it it took me out of the movie again. I guess in that moment. Uh, also, it it kind of feels like so small. Like it's like oh, like they they want to find this treasure, and it's like it's like a little jewelry sized box. Like it's it's not like a big treasure chest that's just overflowing with gold. It's like. This is like a couple of trinkets for an entire army. There ends up being a lot of Nazi zombies. It's like, are all going to share this? I guess. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Again, it feels kind of. I don't know if I want to say cheap, but it's almost like they couldn't afford to get a lot. So they just like, oh, this will do. Just this little <laughs> box full of gold, uh, like, you know, you know, yeah. pendants and coins and, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, it's yeah, it's kind of. I don't know. It's weird. I, so they set up that that's what they want. And at the end of the movie, like the one last guy, like gives him the box back, and th- that seems to be fine. But of course, earlier on in the film, when they first find this box, the girlfriend like slips a coin mm-hmm. in his pocket. So when he gets to the car, the final moment mm-hmm. of the film is that he gets back to the car and he pulls out a coin. And he's like, "Oh shit!" And the Nazi zombies there to kill him. And that's you know we cut the credits mm-hmm. on that. So it's got a kind of like a dark, funny ending. Uh, Cat, mm-hmm. I am busy at the moment. Yes. See, so yeah, I'll demonstrate mm-hmm. the, the whole strangling thing, right? So you pretend you're strangling a cat like this. You, yeah, yeah. You kill you cat. Okay. So, so yeah, and, I mean the one thing we've not talked about. I guess the one thing that's good about it is some of the gore, because you know when they're getting ripped apart. Because yeah. I was almost disappointed because the, 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 easily the two most likable characters were probably the movie nerd, even though he was kind of annoying and like how like mm-hmm. underwritten he was. Uh, and then the girl who was into him, because they had some kind of chemistry at least. But after, they, I mean, they had sex in the outhouse. <laughs> yeah, after they have sex in the outhouse, they both die pretty quickly Which after is that. So disgusting. <laughs> yes. Um. But yeah. So yeah, she's really into that. She like, comes in while he's having a shit and just yeah. like jumps up on top of him. Like, Ugh. yeah. Like I don't know if I'm in the mood when I've literally just like, you know, shit. I. I'm still sitting in the toilet I mean, pan. I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean. To each their own if they're into that kind of stuff, but honestly, I I can't think of anything uh, less sexy. Also, I mean, just the idea of having to go to the bathroom and that's... I mean, it must be so cold. Ugh, it's not good. Yes, I I don't know. So they die first, and that kind of stuff. But he's got a pretty fun death where the the zombies rip open his head. Like, literally just, like, rip it in half, and the brain Mm -hmm. falls out. And, okay, that was kind of fun. Uh, Later on, there's, like, uh, one guy... Because there's a guy whose girlfriend's not there yet. She's like, she's hiking in because she's like really athletic and she wants to like hike. Mm-hmm. And we see her being like attacked at the start of the movie. And he's like gets worried after a while that she's not showing up. So she, so he gets his uh his jet ski, um or his snowmobile rather. <laughs> uh, and he's, yeah. his snowmobile. It, it looks like a like it acts like a jet ski. I've never seen like a snowmobile like that can really do like that kind of stuff. But yeah, there's a lot of jumping and stuff with a snowmobile. It's kind of uh, over the top, but he. Mm-hmm. He goes looking for her, and he ends up like falling into like a, a, you know, into like a cave or whatever. And he ends up finding some of the Nazi zombies. He finds the old man who warned everyone else that uh, they find him dead. But he, 
he ends up like getting really injured and he like there's a really comical scene where he's like hanging off the side of a cliff with the intestines oh yeah of one of the zombies mm-hmm. he's actually hanging by intestines and he ends up surviving but he gets like bit pretty bad in the neck and he kind of like patches himself back mm-hmm. up and he comes back to help at the end of the movie with the, the other guys who are there mm-hmm. But he actually takes like a machine gun from like the the, the Nazis and puts it on his. It's, mm-hmm. it's weird. It's like his snowmobile has like a place for this machine gun. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it just it perfectly fits on the, the mount on the front of his mm-hmm. machine gun. And then he like comes in and like helps at the end. And like you know the two like guys who are left, um, mm-hmm. he tries to help them. And then he gets all of his limbs ripped off. He, like all these zombies like grab him limb by limb and just rip all his limbs off. Oh, yeah. And it's kind of fun. Like. It, it, like that's definitely the, the the only real positive I've got for the movie is that the actual like gore mm-hmm. is so over the top that it's kind of entertaining. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but that's kind of mm-hmm. it. That's, that's, that's like, kind of the extent of my my I, praise. Yeah, I kind of feel like if if they just went for that uh, in the beginning, because it feels like the last third of the movie like it, it seems like they're like, all right, let's get like full on Evil Dead in this, and they even have like you know like a tool shed and stuff, and they get you know, like, all these different tools and stuff, and, and it kind of starts to get a little fun, and I'm like, well, maybe if you were doing this kind of from the start, and you're just like, all right, listen, we're not gonna, you I, know, try I, to develop characters my... or have a plot, we're just gonna have fun death stuff. Like. I think that's my problem, though, is that, like, it feels like such a tone shift when they're like, oh, this, 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 you know, gear up, and they start, like, you know, getting their axes and their, their one shotgun ready, and it's like, it's like, you know, it's the let's get ready scene. Um, and I think even if it was just going to be that, I, I still think I need more likable characters. Like these these characters oh, are, yeah. are so bland. Like I, I, I like mm-hmm. I I could again they feel like daytime TV soap characters mm-hmm. at best. I mean, yeah. Like again, the only person that really has any like a uh, you know character to them is the the movie guy, and then it feels like a wasted opportunity to not have him in that moment like you know if they're going to tool shed and getting like you know stuff like he could you know make maybe make some joke like like this is just like evil dead 2 or something and then yeah like quote a line or whatever like something like that could have been fun but, yeah, but he, yeah instead he, you just left with these really two bland dudes yeah he dies like second and then you know, yeah we're left with the yeah. two bland dudes who you know and obviously the guy who's scared of blood ends up like he gets bitten on the arm and this is the one point where it becomes relevant that the, the, the movie nerd said hey whatever you do don't get bitten yeah. so he cuts off his own arm thinking that he might turn into a zombie that is the only time it's ever really brought up and he he cauterizes the wound by just like setting something on fire and then sticking his stump into the fire yeah. and i'm like yeah. this feels like a completely different movie to what it started as like i, I don't know like it wasn't oh, creepy or anything yeah. like it, it was lacking atmosphere i think that's probably my biggest problem mm-hmm. actually is that there's no atmosphere at all it just it feels like they go out to a cabin and it feels like a sitcom episode. There's no there's no moody atmosphere. There's no like uh, build or anything. It, it just it feels so bland. And you know it, it kind of sucks because I do like the idea of a horror movie like out in the snow. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like you don't yeah you don't see that a lot and you can probably have some cool individual in in <laughs> you can have some cool visuals yes uh, with with individuals. <laughs> but um, yeah, like it, it doesn't feel like. Yeah, anything is that like you said atmospheric and it kind of seems like not really like this remote like uh you know middle of the woods kind of snowy landscape it it feels like it's you know like it seems like i don't know like a ski resort you would go to or something something that's kind of just off to the side of that like it yeah it it doesn't look very interesting or Uh, really have much aesthetic to it i think the visuals need to be better i think the direction itself needs to be better there's not a whole lot of like suspense Mm -hmm. or pacing or anything like that there's no like moments mm-hmm. to stick out to me as like oh that was well handled the way the, the what he did with the camera mm-hmm. there or, or what like how how the scene built or anything like that like everything was just kind of like because they have that jump scare when the the old man shows up mm-hmm. like it's like someone goes outside to check if there was anyone there's like no oh, there's no one there and then he comes in and like the guy's standing right behind him and there's like a big like, you know loud noise I was like that, that was just a generic bullshit like you know that was the point where I realized okay there's definitely not going to be any atmosphere for sure like for the rest of this and. Um- also, I'd say I really don't. I, I don't like the look of the zombies. Like they kind of look cheap and like boring. And even uh, <laughs> there was even one scene where I was laughing, where they kind of have like the I guess the leader or, or whatever uh, of the zombies. And there's a scene with they have him in focus, and then like all like the zombies in the background. The guy that's to his immediate left looked so bored. <laughs> it was like if you. If you freeze frame the shot, it's it's actually like super funny, like like how just like I don't know, just out of it the guy looks, and it kind of feels just like 
an indictment of the movie when it's like you can't even go the extra mile to like you know have your zombies like going like or like growling or making a menacing face like but you literally have like a dude that looks like he's two seconds away from checking his iphone <laughs> yeah I, not good. yeah it, it's really rough because i mean at one point like they have this big scene where the two guys that like, go around and hack like the the, the the half dozen that are there and then like you know yeah. like another 50 rise at once and it's like okay right they're screwed mm. and yeah I don't care about the characters, but even if they are screwed and it's going to be a movie where no matter what, we're going to have like a silly sort of dark ending, even, even if it's like a darkly like comic ending, is that I still have to mm -hmm. be interested in them. I still have to think they're charming or they have to have charisma to carry mm -hmm. this. And they, they don't really, they, they, just, they feel bland. They feel like, again, they should be on a daytime TV show. Mm -hmm. um, or, I mean, if you're not going to have that, then at least have like, you know, 10 or 15 characters so... Yeah, if it's just going to be people dying, at least have a lot so that we can get, like, a big body count going. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that'd that be, like, a a minor, like, sort of uh, consolation prize. But, yeah, it would, it would be something. Yeah. yeah. No, mm -hmm. I, I, I concur with that. Um, so, yeah, it's just a really bland movie. It's a really bland movie. It's got some fun kills, but other than that, like, it looks really, like, generic and not like a movie at all. Um, no atmosphere, not particularly great pacing characters bland as shit um i i was exp i was going into this hoping that i'd think i'd find like a really fun b movie and ultimately i came out just being kind of like yeah eh. <laughs> mm. if it feels like people who made this had never made a movie before and they were just like oh we'll try mm -hmm. making a movie you know what i i feel like the because like I, I i have heard like a lot of people that like it and i feel like the yeah, you know, I don't want to sound pretentious or something, but I, I feel like the people that like it are maybe more casual horror viewers, like you know, people that maybe haven't seen a lot of zombie movies and know the tropes or something, and just discovered it on Netflix once, like you know, that are maybe just like, oh, <laughs> hey, this is kind of like a funny, crazy movie. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. I can and see it maybe be more like that, like the the seasoned horror veteran. Uh, I, I feel like uh, other than like you know some cool kills and stuff, probably isn't getting like. You know that much out of this movie what's interesting is the director here um tommy Wercola, mm -hmm. went on to do the sequel but mm -hmm. he also did hansel and gretel witch hunters which i never saw um okay and he did i actually kind of like that movie i never saw it but he also did he did a movie on netflix last year which i actually did like the look of from the trailer it was called what happened to monday and it was a movie uh, just, just from the trailer oh, okay. it was a uh, numi rapici and there was like it's like this was a world where cloning was banned but there were seven versions mm -hmm. of her so the idea was that each day like a different clone would ha like you'd go out and play the play the person that day and the other six would mm -hmm. stay hiding but monday disappeared and they had to try and mm -hmm. find out what happened to monday and i was like, okay that's a kind of an interesting plot i, I don't know if it's any good though i never watched it yet or I haven't got around to it yet i uh, i haven't watched it but uh melissa actually watched it and liked it quite a bit and <laughs> she's been trying to get me to, to watch it and then we we're thinking about it this weekend but then i looked at it and i was like it's like over two hours so i was like eh, not right now <laughs> yeah uh, so maybe maybe the director's gotten better with time, but I really yeah, yeah. I, I I was not impressed with the the visuals of direction in this at all. Mm. It, it it just it felt it just felt like it just felt like it wasn't a movie. I, I guess you know that must be quite damning, sure. but it didn't feel like a movie to me at all. <laughs> you, you know, if it was a if you take some of the kill scenes and you know it, it feels kind of like an internet video because it's such like a, a very you know easy concept to grasp like Nazi zombies boom. Uh, if you just did that, I was like, hey, watch this five-minute video of, like, these cool scenes yeah. of people killing Nazis and stuff. I mean, it kind of feels um, like a web series. It kind of looks like a web series, actually, now that I'm thinking about yeah. it. That's another, that's another thing I could compare it to. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe with, like, higher but, and, like higher production value in terms of the, the equipment they're using, but, like, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're watching it, like, uh, as something like that, though, you might be more impressed, but... Yeah, and I'm, and I'm sure they're working with like a shoestring budget and stuff, and it's you know probably they're probably able to pull off a lot of cool stuff for cheap. That you know definitely want to give them credit for that. But yeah, I mean overall, just as a movie, I don't think it works necessarily great. Uh, but I'd be lying if I didn't say I you know I, I had some fun with it. Um, we didn't even mention like the you know the big joke where with the guy after he you know cuts off his arm uh, that. Uh, the next thing that happens is like a zombie it rises up and bites his crotch uh, oh yeah and then he just kind of looks down like uh should i amputate this and then it's like nah yeah not worth stupid it. obvious joke but yeah <laughs> i thought it was like that's ah, kind of funny yeah 
Um, and it's funny because it, two or three of the deaths are really over the top and like silly mm-hmm. and kind of fun. But then I feel like the rest mm-hmm. of them are kind of just boring. <laughs> it was it was kind of like hit and yeah. miss, depending on if they were going to be fun or not. Uh, so. And also like. I don't know if this drove you crazy, but like they set up in the beginning, like they start talking about avalanches and how to get out of an avalanche if you get buried in one. Yeah. And I was like, all right, well, this is obviously set up for how the movie's going to end. But then it doesn't. <laughs> like, yeah, it doesn't, th- yeah. That doesn't happen. The closest it comes to it is when the dude falls into like the sort of the snowy cave and it's mm-hmm. like, oh, maybe like him getting out of there is what that was setting up. But it, it never really feels like it's that applicable. Well, yeah, well, there's the there's the one lady that she she you know stomps on the ground to you know cause it to collapse with the zombies, and then she wakes up buried in the snow. And yeah, my first thing was like, oh, she's gonna do that thing they're talking about where they spit to see yeah, which way the spit rolls the thing, up. But that she wasn't in that scene. No, it, exactly. Yeah, that, I, that, that I, was I the guys who were having that conversation. Was... The girls were talking about yeah. you know the boys. <laughs> the guys were talking about the avalanches. Yeah. I said that to Melissa, and she was like, "Oh no, that was uh, she. She wasn't part of that." And I was like, "Oh shit, you're right. <laughs> yeah." So, yeah. all right. So even that like callback, you can't do. Yeah, I guess we'll read it. I guess I guess we're uh, <laughs> we're, we're we're wrapping up on Dead Snow. So, what would yeah. you give Dead Snow to? Uh, I feel like coming into it, I was gonna give it like a five, but I feel like the more we talk about it, the more. The problems were a little bit obvious so i'm gonna go a smidge lower and give it a 4.5 uh i do think there is some fun stuff like again mostly you know the kills and some of the gore uh are definitely worth checking out but um yeah it doesn't make up for like a super satisfying movie experience especially one again i've been hearing you know for a while i was like oh no this is a fun movie you should watch so yeah, yeah a little disappointing but there's some stuff to like there it's definitely not the worst and the, but yeah it doesn't totally redeem it yeah, I'm going to go slightly lower, and then I'm going to go with a straight four. Four out of ten for me. I, I think... I don't want to go harsher than that, because, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I it feels like the people making it, like, it feels like they wanted to make a good movie, and they did the best with what they oh, had. Yeah. They, they just... Yeah. And that sounds really cruel. They just, they just weren't good enough <laughs> to, like... like Because I feel like if I was these people, and I, I could only afford to do what they've got here, I, I would have made the script so much better. I would have spent more time with the actors. I, I would have made the 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 backbone of the movie better so that we didn't have to rely on stuff that we can't afford um and done it yeah. that way so i i do th- i would criticize them for that but um it does feel oddly well intentioned for for whatever it is but yeah, oh yeah definitely that's... it i mean it feels like people that you know like horror and i think understand the genre uh i'm just assuming they're probably working with a lot of you know limitations and you know hey criticizing them but yeah it's a lot better than what you know i would have been able to make um you know given the chance or whatever but uh yeah like you know they the definitely ways they probably could have fleshed out the story more and didn't even really mention it but mention it uh that much but like i i was kind of interested in like again what exactly are these things because they don't really behave like you know typical zombies so are they more like demons or i don't know some type of ghost thing or something <laughs> i mean if anything it was more like a bunch of like Jason Voorhees just woke up and were trying to yeah. kill them, um, but they look kind of like zombies and they call them zombies. But I mean, also, uh, you know, unfortunately, with the the times we're living in, maybe not the best uh, movie to watch where you know uh, Nazis win. Yeah, they, they basically win. Yeah, um, <laughs> obviously, when this was made in two thousand nine, that might not have been as much of a concern, but you know. Uh, yeah. things have taken a taken a turn mm. over the last couple of years, and <laughs> you know uh, it was hard not to think about that a little bit when you know it was like, oh shit, <laughs> we're, we're losing here. What? No. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's Dead Snow. That's that's Dead Snow. It's not a great movie. <clears throat> I don't even think it's a good movie. It's it, it's it's got a couple of charming uh, kills, and uh, you feel like they wanted to make a good movie, so you can't be too harsh on it. But yeah. ultimately, it doesn't uh, add up too much. I'm not sure why it has a cult following, to be honest. I, I guess they just love how over the top some of the kills are. But um, I, I think it's one of those things, too. It's fun for, like, people to say, like, you know, for people just to be, like, Nazi zombies. Like, I, you know, because this was at, like, kind of a time. I, I think we're past the zombie boom at this point. But there was a time where I feel like people just loved being, like, 
oh no, this is a movie with like zombie, you know, uh, fast food employees or something. Like <laughs> people like having these like niche zombie movies. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. But yeah, so ultimately, not a great watch. I, I was kind of struggling to sort of care or get get into it. Uh, but I, I'm happy I finally saw it though. That's like I'm glad that you know could kind of check it off that list. Oh now. sure, like, yeah, okay, always, season. yeah. Cross it off the list. Um, I tried it, mm-hmm. didn't work for me, but hey, we tried. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that, that is the end to this episode of Streams After Midnight. It is October, it is the Octoberthon, so obviously check back for more episodes. If you want to support the show and everything we do here, head over to patreon.com slash TV. You get to vote for a movie once a month for Streams specifically. But even at a dollar, you get some stuff early. Uh, and you get to feel warm and fuzzy inside because you're, you're supporting and helping us. Um, and obviously, even if you don't want to do that, though, even if you can't do that, don't feel too bad. You can like, subscribe, and comment. All that stuff helps us and supports us as well. Uh, but that is us. So stay tuned for more streams coming throughout October, and we will see you next time. So thank you once again, guys. Keep watching scary movies. Goodbye.